Uh, let me start out. Shame on some of you guys for uh, trying to trying to get us to say that uh, we predict the final four, Joe. Um, not to call you out, but I just did. Um, you know, remember this. Uh, I looked through a lot of things last night, and um, you know, back when Mateen predicted something, we were pretty good. But we had a team that was almost all back from the year before, just about every player back, and and some pretty good additions when you look at uh, Jason Richardson being one of them. And, uh, you know, this year we are we really got a lot of guys missing. I mean, you think of Tom was the starting point guard and, and uh, Trice was the starting two guard and Dawson was the starting four man. And I'm not sure. I think we started Schilling <laughs> uh, in that game. Uh, so it's really a completely different team other than Denzel. And we started Forbes on and off last year. But... But I think what, what everybody is looking at is, you know, we've had a good run. We've won 10 out of 11. But, you know, it was 14 or 13 whenever that year that I thought we had the team to win a national championship. We lost three out of our four games, that, last games that year. And uh, so, you know, we've gotten the Final Fours as a seven seed against maybe the best competition we played. I'd say 2000 was the best. But I, I'm not sure last year's wasn't the best. Uh, when you think of Georgia in the first game, when you think of the second game being against the number one seed in Virginia, and then or number two seed, and then to go through uh, um, the two teams we did in Oklahoma and and Louisville, that was probably the hardest to get there. When I look at this year, um, it could be harder to get to the fi- finals of the conference tournament. Uh, you look at us and Maryland and Iowa, and we're all one or two in the country at one time. And so it's a bizarre year. It's got everybody screwed up from writers to coaches to players to fans. And and the only thing I know is we're playing good basketball. We have not. We have not been nearly as good defensively the last four games. Um I think it started with Ohio State there. and First half we were poor, and Penn State we were okay if you looked at, not look at the score, look at the film on what we had to do. And and then uh, very poor the first half of Rutgers, very poor, and and uh, average the first half of Ohio State. I mean, uh, we, and even the second half, as far as doing the things that we need to do. What's going to win for you in the tournament, to me, is your defense and the little things. Are we shooting free throws well? Are we doing a good job on our out-of-bounds plays? Our press breaker looked like a, a fire drill the other day. Um, so we're trying to figure out, uh, are we going to go back to some of the basics today and tomorrow and really work on uh, like a uh, mini boot camp, you know, from uh, getting back to addressing the things that the, the little things do matter. And... Uh, I think, you know, getting up on ball screens, we were just a step off on everything the other day. And we still did a good job. And as my guy Doug Herner says, you know, making shots kills a lot of evils. It really does. Making shots makes you look good. Making shots does not usually win championships. And uh, and that's going to be the issue right now is can we, uh, you know, we've done a better job with our turnovers till the last game, but we were – you know, we're down in a 9 and 8 and 10, I think. And if we can keep that there and still run, I think that's good. Uh, but uh, this Big Ten tournament is, um, I just can't believe. You look at those top eight teams, everybody just about has been ranked one time or another. Uh, the top eight seeds, uh, it's been um, at least three or four of them have been ranked in the top five at one time or another. So it could be as interesting as a Big Ten championship. I mean, we're going to play Penn State or Ohio State. If we play Ohio State, I mean, where did they end up? 11-7 and seven in our league? Um, that's in the first round with 20, 21 wins, uh, beating Kentucky. Um, you know, he's done a hell of a job with a young team there. And um, I think it's a very talented team. And, you know, Penn State – They've proven where they've beaten Maryland. They've beaten Iowa. i just never seen a year like this. Never have I seen a year like this. So 
we're going in hoping to advance in a Big Ten tournament before we even worry about the other one, and yet figure we got our hands full. Uh, you know, in one respect, we have just played both teams somewhat recently. Uh, if it's Ohio State, we've played them. It'll be the third time in three weeks. That's never necessarily great. Um, so uh, we're just going to try to worry about us today, tomorrow, and maybe partially on Wednesday. And then uh, and when I say worry about us, get our press breaker better. So if we play in Iowa, it's better. Get our post defense better. So if we play at Purdue, it's better. No matter who we play in this tournament, get our, uh, you know, defending the three. I mean, we let Williams and, and Loving just sit out there and bomb threes for a while. And so we got to try to get better at each. And then I still think the most talented team in this tournament, team playing the best, is Indiana. The most talented is Maryland. So I just named off six different teams and Michigan State's included in that, but it's a uh, – I don't think you guys have seen a year like this. I know I haven't. Questions? Um, Bryn, if, it's, uh, if you look at this year, he's a pretty pivotal player. When he plays well, you win. When he doesn't, you guys have lost. Um, what do you – what do you, have you learned about trying to keep him on? What do you th- hope he has? Well, he didn't play as well the last game, and we won. So, you know, you're right. But remember, some of those games where he was stopped – Valentine wasn't here. Tom wasn't here. So, uh, you know, I don't think one guy, I, I definitely, I, I think there's, if you look at the statistical information, the analytics of it, as I hate to do, you would say that's 100% true. If you, But you look at this team, um, you know, I mean, Costello has, a, you know, an average is a double-double. And I still think Deontay, is is making making some strides and I think Aaron Harris has made a lot of strides since we lost some of those games in a row early and uh, so we got to keep Ren on by doing the things he does in the last game he did not run his lane as well um, we're at Rutgers he got a bunch of shots that way we got sloppy in the last game guys and whether we want to hear that whether we think it's the Izzo motivation tactic, or, you know, I maybe I would even take, uh, maybe I'd be even dumb enough to take uh, an hour or two and have a media film session to show you what I'm saying here. I, I give it some thought and figure out how you guys would damage me on it. But uh, I think I, I, I really believe that he's got to keep working, coming off screens tough, playing good defense. Um, and he's got to make shots. You know, last game he had some open shots he didn't make. Um, he's just as responsible for that as other guys are responsible for rebound, rebounding. Aaron's responsible for defense. Brent's responsible for making shots. So how are we going to keep him doing that? Just tell him to keep doing what he's been doing because he's been doing a pretty good job of it. So, Tom, you said after the game, you said you're going to put your neck out there and say this is a team you think can win it. But obviously not real, I guess, fired up about the whole guarantee thing from Denzel or how? Well, no, I mean, I mean, I mean you guys baited him into that. Awesome. But but um, I, don't, I don't mind it either. I mean, do I think we're good enough? Yes. Do I think, t- honestly, 15 to 20 teams are good enough? I really, really do. I mean, I just named you six in our league that have been ranked in the top 10, and Indiana hasn't been ranked there yet. And they're playing the best of anybody right now. So uh, that's just in our league. And when I look at the the uh, Big 12, you look at all the teams that were ranked in the top 10 or still are. You know, what we've had this year, uh, somebody called me uh, about a game that a team played against UCLA. And when they beat them, it was a huge win. I think UCLA, did UCLA beat Kentucky? Yes. Yes. So it was a huge win. Now Kentucky or UCLA is, you know, like eighth in the ninth in the league, and um, that, that's happened this year to to more than a few teams because there are just a lot of really good teams or a lot of teams of the same. So I don't mind. Uh, you know, I'm not hiding behind. Do I think we're good enough to be one of the teams considered? One hundred percent. Do I feel comfortable? Zero percent. I just don't. I don't. I don't like the fact that uh, down the stretch here we haven't stuck to our attention to detail. And 
I mean, we had a film session this morning and got after it a little bit, and we're going to get after it today in practice and tomorrow because uh, we got to improve in those areas uh, if we're going to be a real contender because one and done time is a little different than the rest of the year. Tom, two-part question. It is said that good teachers are made that way by hungry students. From you on down to your staff, it's probably been one of your best coaching jobs. How much credit goes to the players who are hungry for that coaching? Well, I think, I, I, you know, I've said it to you guys about two weeks ago. I thought my staff um, has been good. I, I think like players sometimes, I think they've taken their game to another level. I think they deserve a lot, a lot, a lot of credit this year. I, I just think that, uh, you know, we went through a tough time in the beginning of January, and, and they just kind of hung with guys, got guys in. Uh, Costello got better. A shilling made some post moves. So, you know, DJ and Mike did a better job that. We convinced Aaron Harris what he had to do. Dane did a good job of that. Um, so when that happens, coaches have to step up, and you bring up a good point. Players have to be receptive to it. And um, I look at an Aaron Harris, and he's been as receptive as you can get. I look at Deontay, and has really done a, a good job. You know, we, we kind of had all given up on Marv. I mean, let's face it, Marv was hardly playing. And Kenny gets hurt, Marv gets a chance. I thought Marv played as well as anybody on Saturday. Uh, that was encouraging. So uh, we, we, we need to get Tom, you know, back to being that 10-minute-a-game guy. He struggled the other night. Uh, that's what happens when you don't get to work on your game much. But uh, this has been the most receptive team as far as uh, – trying to figure out what the needs of the team are, uh, what the coaches want, um, adjustments they've made. Uh, yeah, it's been – I made no bones about it. It's been fun. You asked me why I'm, I seem more relaxed. Well, I'm more relaxed because I've got the closest thing I've had in a while to a player coach team. And, uh, and my assistants have really done an incredible job. And, and so that makes it easier in the head coach. Your team has four blowout losses notched in their belt against Penn State and Ohio State this year. Does the fact that you have four senior leaders benefit that they're not going to let those other guys overlook Friday night? One of the better questions um, because that is the battle cry. You know, how many close games have we played in? Not many in the last 10 or 11, not many at all. And uh, is that a plus to us? Or is it a minus for our future? You know, I mean, you have to know how to play in those kind of games. And so I think the seniors are going to be incredibly important this year. And I think they know it. I think they're they're working and doing the things they got to do to it. I, I still say, you know, and when I say Kobe on down, I mean Kobe on down. Uh, they've done a good job. I called yesterday. They had a little meeting themselves today to go over some things. I, I think they're really in the right place. But um, – and it's been a hell of a book. Unfortunately, um, everybody looks for the endings. And um, I'm telling you, I, I feel confident we could win the Big Ten championship. And I feel unconfident enough to know we could lose in the first game. And uh, anybody that thinks that's a, that's a motivational you know, statement, I, I, you know, I just – I don't feel as – good about things because I respect the other teams and I think they are good you know I think Purdue's playing better you know Iowa was playing worse but geez what they did at the beginning what they've done to us we haven't even been in a ball game with them um, you know I still think Maryland if you look at them man that's a talented team you know and uh, Tremble is you know a really good player and he's so they've got a big guy and they've got him and they've got some shooters um Purdue's more like us, more of a blue-collar team. Uh, Indiana's a difficult team to guard because they're so athletic. And they've got a, you know, we've got Valentine, they got Yogi Ferrell, and uh, I'm sure both team guys will be first-team all-conference guys and are probably up for All-American honors. Um, so it's going to be a hell of a tournament. I mean, when you're in a tournament like that, you need your upper classroom to make sure we're focusing on each and every game on the step or that's when you get knocked off.
Tom, you just talked about how much of a buzzsaw that the Big Ten is this year. And, and I know that the only year you've won the tournament without winning the regular season title was 2014. But if the team were to win the Big Ten tournament this year, could we possibly see a Big Ten tourney banner go up in the rafters? That's a good question. You know, uh, I don't know if some guys get ripped for putting those up. Some guys get credit for putting those up. I think what you're starting to see, and I don't think this is good or bad, because I, I – I really disagree with the people that think the Big Ten regular season isn't important. Now, the schedule has screwed me up, probably you guys up, and probably our fans up. Um, and, and it's of nobody's fault. It's just what happens when you have bigger uh, conferences. Uh, but I hate to diminish. I'll, I'll never diminish um, the fact uh, When I first came in the league, I told you Knight, Katie, Haskins, those guys, they believed in it so much. And uh, there is some truth to it, uh, that winning that over a a two-and-a-half-month period is a heck of an accomplishment. The the three days or four days, um, you can be lucky, an off day, an injury, an illness, bad shooting day, you know, but when you sustain over two-and-a-half months, that should mean a lot. In the ACC and Big East, I think the conference tournaments meant more over the years that I've been a coach. Um, If it's starting to get that way in the Big Ten, maybe you'll see more people hanging banners for their conference tournament championships because uh, of the more importance to them. Um, You know, it's something I haven't discussed with my AD. I haven't thought about talking to my players about it. Um, But it is something I think I have to look into pretty pretty quick. Tom, at one point it looked like it's something you'd have to go through Iowa and get to see them again in, in Indianapolis, and they've kind of fallen off, and now they're not even really on your seed line. It wouldn't be till Sunday. I know after Utah comments, those were in the locker room, and how much would... Is it they were in the of, locker room. I, I, I think you should know something about me. You know, if, if I thought it was disrespectful comments, um, I'm sure I'd shoot my mouth off and put my foot in my mouth. If I thought they were deserved comments, I'm going to try to use them as motivational. I thought those were deserved comments. Did it bother me? Yes, it did. It bothered me more when I watched the tape and I said, yeah, I can see what he's saying, you know. And yet uh, um, that has no bearing on this. I have great respect for not only him. Sap is, you know, he's like one of us around here when he's back, um, uh, you know coach I love I think he's great so there's no I think I'm way beyond that I think I look at it as um, a motivating factor to say if I think we're too soft and other players think we're too soft I'd say we must be too soft and I think we've we've grown from that I think I think that helped us I really do now did it tick me off yeah because it's an insult was it a correct insult was it or was it someone shooting their mouth off? It was a correct insult. He was right. Uh, where I was kind of going, sort of the path to how uns- I mean, Ohio State perhaps you've just played twice instead of like a, an Iowa who I'm sure these guys would love to show what they are later this year. How much is the, sort of the path, sort of, I don't want unsatisfying if you want to pick the title, but the, the way to get there. Not well, I never know. liked playing. You know, we had to play uh, Wisconsin four times that year to win the, big, to, to win the national championship. I mean, that was brutal. It's just hard to do. You know, I was, I, I remember um, calling NFL guys to, that had won, beaten the same team three times in a year, just trying to figure out some way to, to uh, get an edge on that when you start going three and four times. When you do it in such a short period of time, um, like if, if Ohio State wins, um, it's difficult. And then you add to that that both times we have won in double digit wins um i don't know if it's unsatisfying it's just uh it's more difficult in some ways but uh, i don't think anybody's got an easy path to get here i really don't i mean uh okay we don't have iowa on our side but you know we got ohio state penn state and and maybe maryland on our side you know and the other side's got the same thing you know uh indiana purdue could meet early you know that's going to be a that could be a battle. And, and you know what normally happens? Not very often is it all go chalk in the, uh, in the 
Big Ten tournament. It hasn't seemed to anyway over the years. You know, it seems like there's upsets all the time. We've been part of the upsets, and we've done some upsetting. So uh, it's worked both ways. I, I don't think our guys are looking at that, that, geez, we wish we would have played Iowa, or geez, we wish we would have played. I think they know that from the eight seed on down, every one of those teams um, have showed signs. I mean, Michigan beat uh, Maryland, uh, you know, and, and has played very well. Uh, every one of those teams is capable of, of winning this thing, from, if you ask me. And, and then that's not including the surprise teams. Who was picked to win the league, Matt? I don't even know. Maryland, weren't they? Maryland? I'm wondering if, if, if the Big Ten tournament means more to you when you don't win the regular season. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair statement. Um, you'd like to redeem yourself. You get kind of a second chance. It, um, and I think, you know, we played well enough in all but two games. So if, if, if the team who won it only had two losses, I'd feel differently. But, I mean, we could have won those other three games, and we could have lost them. Now, there weren't many games that we won that we could have lost, but there's three that we lost that we could have won, if that makes any sense, if you look at it analytically, statistically. But, um, yeah, this is an exciting time for us because uh, I'd like a chance on a year when the league is really good to to win the Big Ten tournament. But uh, I'm sure there's... Maryland wants to redeem itself. Iowa, who started out better than anybody, wants to do theirs. Indiana wants to finish the job. Uh, Purdue has its own battle cries. Uh, so we all got them. Um, but I think there's a little more motivation when you haven't won the regular season yet. But it's not really one-and-done time, right? I mean, you can't. You talked last week about... Oh, it's 100% one and done time. Even when, when your season's not over. Well, it is to me because because this teaches you, you know, and it is one and done in this particular... When you play during the regular season, you know, other than a even a tournament you play in, you can't win the championship, but you play the third place game. I mean, this truly is... Uh, to me, one and done time. And I think it's really important that players, fans, everybody understands why coaches are so anal and crazy about l- little things making a difference. It's all pointed to this. And I hate the fact, I've already explained why I've started this two weeks early this year. I hate the fact that we snap our fingers after the Big Ten tournament and say, well, now the NCAA tournament, if you lose, you go home. You hang up your sneakers forever. I, I don't think that's fair of us. I think uh, understanding how we gradually get into that is really important. And um, whether it's going to work or not, it doesn't matter. I would do the same thing again, and I'm going to do the same thing year in, year out. I think players have to understand in this day and age of AAU ball where you lose at two, you play at six, you win at two, you play at eight, that's not real world. That's Disneyland, brother. And we got to start getting a little bit more understanding of what the real world is, that there are consequences to not performing up to the standards you need to perform at to advance. Tom, obviously the Big Ten Awards come out today, national awards coming out soon. First of all, can you politic for Denzel for those things a little bit? And secondly, where were his biggest areas of growth between year one and now and in between the beginning of this year and now? Well, politic for Denzel, um, I've already stated that uh, I think there's great candidates. We've got two or three in our league. You know, right now, Udoff and Farrell are definitely candidates for different awards. And nationally, you know, you've you got Simmons. And, of course, you you, you got my man at, at Oklahoma whose buddy has done so many things. And there's probably a couple more. Um, Grayson Allen, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know all of them. I've, I've kept it kind of a two horse race. Um, that's just in my own mind and everybody knows that's a little bit crazy. So, uh, I'm not saying it's that, but I think Denzel has improved since his freshman year in every single category except academically. 
He was pretty good then, and he's pretty good now. Other than that, he hasn't upgraded that a lot, but he hasn't downgraded any. But if I looked at passing, shooting, ball handling, rebounding, defense, his body, and his leadership, he's improved in every area. I guess there's two areas that I would say he didn't. Academically, he hasn't made any big strides, and um, I don't think he's made any big strides with his intelligence. I think he's become a more understanding guy on the foolish passes and things, but I don't think he's, I think he's always had a tremendously high basketball IQ. What has he changed from? Hey, Malaysia Airlines. At least, that's all right. Huh? Huh? Remember, this is a new this is a new year. I'm more relaxed now. I'm not gonna throw somebody's thing at you or anything. You know, it's no 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 big deal. But I'd say this year he has improved um, with his body. That was a, a you know I, I watch him eat now and I just start laughing at him. He eats like my wife. You know, I mean everything's healthy and everything's good and it makes me kind of sick sometimes. But it's uh, it, it really has changed. I mean, he he's really bought into some of the things some of the people have told him. I do think he's made a concerted effort to get rid of the flash and dash stuff and keep more to solid, and uh, has improved in that dramatically. And yet, once in a great while, he still has a revert back. And uh, uh, you know, I understand that. But his shooting probably has improved. Um, He's become a way more, not way more, but a more, yeah, way more consistent shooter. I mean, I, I look at him now as a shooter. I looked at him other years that he can make shots. Uh, I, I think he is a shooter. He's not Brent Forbes, but he's not far behind him. Um, the only area that's dipped a little to me is his rebounding, and I told you that's because I moved him in positions. And when you talk, I guess my last, since, since probably... Nobody here is, if you aren't voting or you are voting, it's already in. But my last thing would be, that kid changed positions in the middle of the year. And when I look at some of these great programs in the Big Ten even, that have gone completely injury-free, means that everybody you're passing to, everybody knows exactly where everybody else is going. Everybody, We have been so disjointed in that respect that that puts a lot on your quarterback. And that guy has handled it with class, and he's handled it, has accepted it, and I don't think anybody would appreciate. I mean, some of these teams are playing six people, and they played the same six the whole time. Um, it can be harder to play that way if you got fatigue in that, but it can be easier to play in that way because everybody knows everybody, and you know exactly where they're going. You know, one minute he's throwing a lob to – Costello and one, you know, then halfway through the year he's throwing them to Didi, you know, and they're different people. And uh, and I think that's what's impressed me the most about Denzel. We've had to do it a little bit different way. Um, and uh, he's handled it. And that moving positions, everybody said, well, he was already played some point and he, oh, he played a little bit of point in his career, but he didn't play a lot of point here. And uh, to make that move um, in one day before we went to Wisconsin, when I think about it, is uh, maybe his greatest asset that he's done. I'm just wondering, do you, do you still expect Kenny back this year? You know, he shot the other day for the first time. It was like he took a big step forward because uh, he was, God, he was still in a in a sleeve. I mean, a, a, a real wounded one. I mean, a, a real one, not a sleeve. It was, you know, the metal. Um and then all of a sudden he, he started shooting, and uh, you know I had almost written him off forever, meaning ever this year. And uh, I think there's a chance it won't be the Big Ten tournament, and uh, and then it will only be if if no further injury, which I think will be fine. So this one, you know, every injury Kenny's had, um, the, the sports hernia he came back faster than any guy we've had. There was a ankle thing he came back faster than most this one has been probably longer than they predicted and it's nobody's fault it's not his it's not the trainers or doctors it's just the way it works so 
your your guess is as good as mine. At the risk of baiting you into anything here, Tom, uh, Matt Costello, I was wondering. You can give it. You can't take it. I get you. What? No, I'm fine. I didn't bait him in anything, but that's fine. Um, Matt Costello, uh, his girlfriend, off the court, wondering, you know, if that's been any sort of impact on him. Especially well, I think it's been a positive impact, you know. There's negative impacts sometimes with um, um, girlfriends. <laughs> I mean, uh, any distraction's a distraction. But sometimes, you know, in this day and age when uh, if you're more playing the field, uh, so to say, uh, you got more distractions. If you're locked in, you got less distractions. So uh, I think for Matt, this has been a positive. Um, he's, uh, she understands, you know, what he's doing. Um, I think appreciated by his family and everything. Um, he already knows what he has and what he's going to have, so he can focus, stay focused on our stuff. Um, I mean, I hope he focuses in for the next uh, three weeks because at his age, he should be guaranteed 60, 65 years of marriage. You know, 60, 65 years is a long time, man. So he'll be able to take care of that. Um, that is a good question, though, man. I never had anybody ask me a question like that either. So you're two for two today, Joe. Uh, I I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it has a distraction. I think it's in certain kids' lives. We we said this. Um, I remember early in my career, we said, "I wish he'd had a girlfriend," you know. So he just sit in, and we'd have someone to go to and talk to. But she's been great, and I think I think a positive influence. Tom, you mentioned how you don't like how after, right after the conference tourney is done, you have to immediately start preparing for the NCAA tourney. Um, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with preparation. I'm wondering, though, if around this time of the year in March, are you ever fully content when it comes to preparation before a game? Mm. Never. Never. Uh, right after watching the film today, I'm not even approaching content. And uh, I say that because there were a lot of – little things that we didn't do and uh almost to the point that um yesterday we had a day off and to me it was the first one since december in my mind you know where didn't watch film didn't do this didn't do that and and so about 10 o'clock last night my family went to bed i said i gotta watch the film so i went in my office and watched the film and that was a stupid thing to do because then i i just ticked off all night you know I didn't think we did a good job and and you know when I went over with the team today um they agreed they agreed I mean we just we just made some mistakes that we can't make if we're going to move forward now that doesn't mean you're ever going to get the perfection but we're a long way from that as far as preparing for games you know the hard part about the Big Ten tournament that I said is if you play that Sunday if you get lucky enough to play that Sunday and then you are out west on a Thursday that's difficult. Um, other than that, um, you know, two and three days to prepare for a team at this point in time, that's fine. You know, that that's fine. I mean, and it's the same for everybody. So it's unless a team gets knocked out real early, but they're not going to know till Sunday night who they're playing anyway. So uh, I think that's fine. I think the only thing that's hard sometimes about the Sunday Big Ten compared to I don't know if the Big East or ACC, I don't know how many are Saturday now. Um, you just get that data to, uh, you know, maybe work on yourself again, maybe look at your own film. Uh, you don't get that as much Sunday. But it's it's not a big deal. It really isn't. As long as you're not playing Thursday and traveling, it makes it a little more difficult. Tom, from the outside, it looks like your team is ready for the postseason. We, we don't see necessarily all the warts that you do. But going into this Big Ten tournament, outside of winning the Big Ten tournament, which obviously is a goal, what what do you really hope to gain? Is it the number one a number one seed in the NCAA tournament? Is it what what are you really looking for beyond just the tournament championship? You know, I didn't. I say this, and you may believe it, you may not. Being a one or two or three seed is not as important to me as it used to be. Um, 
is it a status for the program? Maybe a little bit. I don't even know if it's looked at that way anymore. Um, I want to see us getting better in these little things. I want to see the cutouts getting better. The where are you supposed to be on a ball screen? You know, why are we a step behind? One step makes such a difference. I want to see if we can take three days of practice here, then prepare for a team and execute it. And as I told my players, the reason this program has had success in the tournament is we've been great at one-day preparations. For one-day preparation, there has to be an incredible trust between player and coach, and coach has to do his job and players have to carry it out because there's not a lot of room for arguing or debate at that point in time when you got one day, you know, it's not like, well, let's see on Tuesday how we want to play these ball screens and then say to the player, you know, what do you think? And then on Wednesday we change it up. I mean, we do that often during the year. I do respect what my players think. They're the ones that got to guard it. But when it comes to the tournament, there's just no time to do that. So there's got to be a great focus on our part and uh, great trust on their part. And then the bottom line is they have to carry it out. So, I want to see if we can carry some things out. I, I hope we get past the first game. I mean, listen, we've gone to a Final Four and lost in the opening game, too. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I take nothing for granted right now. Um, but I want to see if we can get past the first game, if we can focus in on that and do the job in a one-day prep and, and not even a one-day prep in the Big Ten tournament. I think that'll help us for the NCAA tournament and and see how we handle things, you know. Um We've got some people that we might play that we've beaten, and we could end up playing some people that beat the daylights out of us. And uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Are we getting a little better? Um, Are we getting our defense back to where it belongs? Um, That's probably really what I'm looking forward to, would you? That's it? You sure? Because I guess we're not roundtabling it? No. So is... If there's anything else, I'll take it. ESPN, as he listed, is 40% favorites to win the Big Ten tournament. You know, that surprises me, because especially being down in Indiana, and they're playing so good right now. But I think sometimes you go on this, how much we've beaten teams by. Because I look at that and I go, that ain't right. You know, I mean, there's been 15, 20, 25-point wins on a regular basis. But then you got to look at who we played. You know, we haven't played Iowa in that stretch. Uh, we got beat by Purdue, and if you look at the top teams, um, we did beat Indiana at home, and we did beat Maryland in a dog fight. Um, we did we Wisconsin, but we we lost them over there. So, I mean, we've. I, I, some of our stat lines have been impressive to me. Our shooting's been impressive to me. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm confident enough to say I think we have a sh- good a shot as most teams to win the Big Ten championship and to advance deep, deep, deep into the tournament, Final Four. I, I, I will admit that. I will say that. Um, but I don't feel... Maybe because we haven't had as many close games, how are we going to deal with those? Maybe that would be a good thing to get out of this. hope it doesn't happen, but that, that would be a good thing to get out of this. Uh, how do we handle those situations? Those are situations that we as a staff are going to have to do a better job um, kind of putting together in practice, simulating the best we can uh, because we haven't had many of those games in the last 10, if any, one Purdue. And didn't handle it well. So, make you feel more go ahead, you make me feel more. Final four favorite last year with the president and everybody else. This year, it's going to be. I think you'll be a huge favorite. No, the you know, Kansas, Carolina. I think will be huge favorites. Oh, to go to the final four. Yeah, maybe we'll be in that group just because of what we've done. But Indiana. I mean, I don't know why Indiana's not getting as much love. If you look at what they've done over this period of time. Um, you know, it's been incredible. You have an an Oh, I thought you had an answer for me on why. Um, you know, they've accomplished some incredible things, and including going to Iowa on senior day and, and winning a game that would have put them in the championship race. 
Now, that impresses me. You know, to me, we haven't done that. Um, I thought it was important going to Ohio State and playing well because I think they're a good team, and I didn't think we'd beat it in as many good teams on the road. Now, you don't play any in the tournament, but you know what? It's not going to make me feel uncomfortable. It'll make me feel proud if we are, and I don't worry about the uh, the anvil on my back. I've been there, done that, and like I said, we've we've done it so many different ways. I mean, just last year we're a seven seed. You know, it's hard to get there much. But you know what? What, what were we? Were we a two seed? Were Payne and them or a three seed? No, four seed. But we got beat by a seven seed who won it all. So I think what's happened now is the only thing a one does is it gives you the best chance to get out of the first game. But it also puts the most pressure on you because it's going to happen now. A 16 is going to beat a 1. I mean, if you don't know that, newsflash, it's going to happen. All right? So there is pressure on that. But when you look at some of the two seeds that have gone down, when I think of programs like Duke and great programs that have gone down, I don't feel very comfortable. And then when I start looking at those goofy talking heads projections on who could be a 7, 8, or 9, if you're a 1 seed and you're going to play some of these 8 seeds, I go, holy mackerel, those are good teams. Uh, and uh, it's just changed so much in the last couple of years, guys, that it's it's going to be uh, survival. And that's why, that is why I will remain on edge until we're done. And I, I think that's a, a totally good thing. And if my team does, we got a better chance to move forward. I really believe that. Thanks.